Thank you, Jude. Good morning, everyone. I bring you a warm welcome from the beautiful Cayman Islands. I'm sorry we couldn't bring a little more of the warm weather here, but I'm sure you get quite enough of that in the summer. I'm delighted to be here again this year and to take this opportunity to share some thoughts with you and to hear directly from those of you who do business in Cayman. Gatherings such as this also provide a platform for me as Premier to say how much we in the Cayman Islands appreciate and value the business relationship of the people in this room. You're all an important part of the Cayman Islands economic fabric. As we embark on a new decade, I'm really excited about the prospects for the future of the Cayman Islands. While there are and always will be global uncertainties, I am confident that the Cayman Islands will continue to be the financial services jurisdiction of choice for those who rely on the invaluable professional expertise that we have to offer in providing a variety of solutions for international business, including for funds and insurance. <clears throat> Indeed, we are enjoying a robust period of economic activity with solid, sustained growth across all sectors combined with low employment and moderate inflation. Economic growth that along with prudent financial management has provided strong and stable government finances with operational surpluses that has enabled us to invest in major infrastructure projects and improve public services while reducing public sector debt and growing our reserves. To provide some perspective, between 2013 and 2018, the Cayman Islands economy has grown at an average rate of 3% per year in real terms. The last two years have been exceptionally good with GDP growth of 3.4% in 2018 coming in stronger than the estimated growth in many of the world's more advanced economies. And when the final numbers are in, we anticipate that last year we'll see growth at again around about 3%. Economists, however, continue to warn of a coming recession, but are undecided on its timing. As such, we have conservatively, and I think wisely, forecast slower growth for this year and next, bearing in mind the lowered growth projections by the IMF for the world's advanced economies over this period. That said, I believe that the foundations that we have put in place in the Cayman Islands will continue to provide a platform for growth in the medium term and that we are today better placed to face any future economic downturn than ever before. So much so that against the backdrop of an anticipated global slowdown, the Cayman economy is still projected to achieve growth of between 2 and 3%, which I think is a demonstration of the strength and vitality of today's Cayman economy, but in particular, the financial services industry. Our important financial services center role as a tax neutral conduit for international transactions has continued to grow from strength to strength. Despite the profits of doom, the changes to our business regime to introduce economic substance will by all accounts <clears throat> further grow the financial services sector and will bring other benefits to our economy as new businesses of various types open offices and bring staff to the Cayman Islands. Indeed, this is posing what I call one of the challenges of success, building the infrastructure quickly enough to sustain the continued growth in the overall population of the Cayman Islands. All of this creates new activity and new economic opportunities for Caymanians, for employment, as well as for developing and growing businesses into the future. And as we continue to further develop as an international financial services center, we will always take our international responsibilities seriously regarding tax cooperation and crime prevention. We have a long history 
of complying with global regulation. We are continuing to face challenges, particularly from the European Union, with respect to a range of matters affecting our financial services center. And there is always constant pressure to change or to introduce new legislation. I wish to assure those of you in this room, though, that despite the international pressures which are, are continuing to bear, we will not, the Cayman Islands government will not make concessions with respect to our industry which will result in undermining the, the, the proper premise and basis for that industry, in particular with respect to funds. Despite our long history of complying with global regulation, sadly, our track record remains largely ignored. Many people who should know better are still willing to fall back on the tired old trope of Cayman as a haven for shady dealers and dirty money. Some politicians in Europe would rather attack Cayman's tax neutral status as being unfair than deal with their own crippling tax regimes. Authors and film and television producers seem too lazy to find out facts when they can just use the words Cayman Islands to wrongly signify financial secrecy or money laundering. The latest and, and very recent example of this has been AT&T's Just OK Is Not OK advertising campaign that featured a dodgy accountant and his frequent trip to the Cayman Islands. We responded immediately with a letter demanding they cease and desist. Their response goes through the necessary two paragraphs telling us they do not accept they were at fault. Well, I used to be an attorney, I kind of get that. But they finally concluded by agreeing to change their advert as a, quote, goodwill gesture. This was a significant win for us, and this is how we will operate going forward. We will not hesitate to challenge illegitimate portrayals of Cayman in the media. Alongside that, however, we are engaging in a charm offensive, seeking to demonstrate to those with influence in the media industry that the Cayman Islands can be and ought to be represented in a new way as the great place to live, work, visit, and do business that we all know it to be. And I know that we can count on the people in this room to assist us in those efforts. I got the, the easy part of the job today. The really difficult bit and the really serious address will come from my Minister of Financial Services. Thank you all for your attention.